Hello and welcome, I am Designer Dave and this is Game Design 101 Part 2, the second part in a multi-part series that teaches game design to newbies and people who want a refresher uh, alike. Let's refresh on what we did in Part 1 in case you don't want to watch it. Uh, basically we went over the definitions of things, a game designer is someone that can translate real and fictional experiences into gameplay and predict the value of those gameplay experiences. And there's lots of tips and tricks in part one, so I suggest you watch that. Here we're going to go into what a gameplay system is. So a gameplay system is the realization of transforming real or fictional activities into gameplay. That is to say, you are taking that fiction and you are turning it into an actual system that the player can uh, play and enjoy. A gameplay mechanic is a component of a gameplay system, and that means that it's one aspect of that gameplay system. So in a shooter, it might be reloading or how a particular weapon works, things like that. How do we design games? Um, so this is my recommendation. You don't have to follow it, but basically with any game, you're going to start with a genre of games. <clears throat> so if you don't know what the genre is, it's very difficult to sort of know where to start when it comes to game systems design. So let's look at some basic genres. We have the action game, the adventure game, the role-playing game, shooters, simulations, and strategy games. I, I go into those details in part one as well, so we're assuming that knowledge is there. Here we're going to talk about common gameplay systems that uh, may be a part of all of these games. So combat. Almost... Uh, Every game has some form of combat in it these days. They're definitely the most popular uh, games. Uh, any shooter, first-person shooter, fighter games, uh, beat-em-ups, shmups, etc. Those all have some form of combat system. Navigation is simply how you move around in the world. So every game has some form of navigation, whether it just be an overhead map or it be an actual complicated parkour-style thing. Many game games have an experience or leveling system of some form. Some of them have this in the form of a meta game where you're moving on a map. Some of them have this in very specific um, leveling up scenarios where you're actually putting points into different attributes in your character, such as in RPGs. A camera system. Most games are 3D these days, thus there's some form of camera system. Even in a 2D game, uh, there's a camera system, how it tracks the player and so forth. Uh, an economic system, that's what your character is spending money on in the game. Some games are entirely based off of economy uh, systems, such as uh, trading games and things like that. A points or scoring system, something that basically keeps track of how you're doing in the game. This is more common in uh, competitive games, PvP games, uh, tracking the number of kills, for example but most, most games have some form of a points or scoring system. In conversation, this is like how your character deals with dialogue and whether they're, when they're talking to people, if the player has any choices. Not every game has a conversation system, but most games have some form of player choice in it, and we're just going to wrap that into a conversation system. Now we're going to break it down by each type of genre. So what if, which of these common systems appear in that genre. Most action games have a combat system because you're fighting things. Most have a navigation system because you're moving from area to area. A lot of action games have uh, an experience or leveling system of some form where you're at least upgrading your stuff, um, if not actually putting points into skills in, in a tribute system. Um, and of course, you know, there's a camera system and some sort of points or scoring system. So most action games have these things. So what they tend not to have is a conversation system. A lot of games are adding dialogue uh, in them, even when it doesn't necessarily make sense. Uh, a lot of action games don't necessarily have an economic system, but uh, some of them do, where, you're, where it's simply just you're collecting money and then you spend it in a little store or something. Your mileage may vary <laughs> depending upon what type of action game. Uh, so adventure games typically have navigation, uh, that is you're moving around the world in this adventure game. Uh, they typically have a conversation system, and that's where most of the gameplay takes place in determining uh, the outcomes of the game. Uh, and then there's some sort of points and scoring system. Now, a lot of games uh, will have an inventory system. So, you know, that's one of the things that I excluded here, um, not, not on purpose, but just because I wanted to keep things simple. A role-playing game, well... 
Role-playing games tend to have most of these things. Uh, they tend to have a combat system because there has to be some form of fighting uh, to use your abilities on. They have an experience and leveling system because you have attributes and you're playing a role. Therefore, you probably have some sort of skill tree. And sometimes there's a charisma attribute that affects dialogues. And so there's obviously uh, going to be a conversation uh, tree that happens. And, uh, you know, obviously there's a camera system of some form, navigation of some form, because exploration is a huge part of role-playing games. And every role-playing game tends to have some sort of economy because you're, in order to exist in the world, there must be some sort of economy, though, you know, some of them are very shallow economy systems. The thing that it lacks is usually a points slash scoring system because there's really no point in tracking that stuff. They do some background tracking in case, like, you kill a lot of numbers of a faction. Maybe they have a faction system. That's something that's missing from my common systems because a faction system isn't all that common in a lot of games, even though sometimes it should be. Cyberpunk 2077. Shooters. What kind of systems might you see in shooters? Maybe take a guess before I show. I'm just going to show. All right, combat, navigation, and camera systems. Those are the core elements of, of pretty much every shooter. Some of them might have a, a light um, economy where you're buying things in a shop, but a lot of them don't. And and if they do have it, it's usually like something that takes place in between uh, levels or out in a meta that is part of um, the monetization system, which I think is terrible, but seems to be more commonplace these days in like the Call of Duty series and things like that. But overall, most shooters are basically the very simplistic uh, navigation and camera system and then a hardcore combat mechanic with lots of different types of weapons and, you know, a lot of it comes from a team dynamic you know one one system that's not on here is the multiplayer system and how you interact with other people and chat and things like that but that would be a system that you would see in a lot of shooters these days more of them are starting to have leveling systems and experience systems so that's also something that's new to the shooter genre within the last i'd say 10 years next up simulation what what systems might you expect to see in a simulation Well, you can have combat depending upon the simulation, uh, like any sort of war simulator would have some sort of combat system, though it's not necessary. So, for example, SimCity would not have uh, a combat system, though it might have a disaster system in place of a combat system to keep the tension up. Uh, navigation, simply how you move around the simulation, like in SimCity, that would be an overhead map and you're scrolling around the map, whereas in like a Rome Total War, that would be actually moving around the battlefield, similar to like an RTS. Um, obviously, the camera system goes along with that navigation system. And then uh, most simulations have very strong economic models. So that would be the main one uh, for the simulation genre, because uh, when you're simulating something, Often there's an economy that you're simulating and then some sort of points scoring system to determine how you did in the simulation. In SimCity, it would be a score to determine how well your city did. And typically there would not be any sort of conversation system in most simulation games. Now, another one is flight sims. That's where navigation and camera are super important. Strategy games. What, what do you think the common systems would be for a strategy game? Right. Typically, it's going to be combat. Most strategy games revolve around combat. Uh, there would definitely be an economic system and some sort of point scoring system to determine uh, how well you did, how good your strategy was. Obviously, there's like you know basic camera stuff depending upon what the strategy is, but it's not necessarily always there. So, for example, a, a strategy game like Artillery is a strategy game wherein the camera doesn't move at all. It's like just a static thing, and you're fire you're aiming and firing at another uh, opponent and you're just trying to get the physics of the shot down and so they wouldn't have a conversation system they wouldn't have uh, an experience or a leveling system typically um, and you know there's not much navigating to be done in the strategy game it's usually one map and you're fighting on that map um, though there are strategy games that do have navigation where uh, you're exploring a map so uh, like a real-time strategy would have that, like, you know, StarCraft and whatnot. So, you know, there are exceptions to all of these. these. This is by no means meant to be a all strategy games only have these three things. That's not what I'm doing here. I'm just sort of showing you the common systems that you'll see in each of these genres. And I, I hope that was enlightening in terms of 
once you've selected a genre, you sort of already know what the basic common systems you're going to have to create are. And depending upon what kind of game you're going to make, uh, you might want all of these systems and, or you want might want to limit your scope to just a few that you do very well and then have very light versions of the you know economic model maybe you want to focus on the combat maybe you get rid of the economic model by only having a point by system and everything is focused on the combat itself there's all sorts of ways to approach this but at least you know now within a genre you'll have it you know you should have a general idea of what systems you might encounter what is the best genre to express the game I want to make? So this is this is a core thing to think about when you're thinking about um, some type of game that you want to make. Now, let's say that you wanted to make a game development uh, game. <laughs> what what genre would you use to uh, express a game development game? Probably simulation, right? Um, but let's look at better examples uh <laughs> so let's say lord of the rings spider-man and horseback riding are, are three games that you want to do uh you wanted to create games for so what genres would be best at expressing these um so for lord of the rings you could literally do anything i think except for maybe shooter unless you want to do like legolas kills a million orcs sort of game probably not going to do a simulation because you know that would be kind of boring i would think though a lord of the rings um combat simulator wouldn't necessarily be boring but i just don't think it it evokes the the feeling of lord of the rings as much as the other ones like a shooter probably a little bit ridiculous unless again you do the goalless thing but yeah like a action game definitely in lord of the rings vein uh, we've seen some arcade lord of the rings games that are pretty cool uh, an adventure game makes a lot of sense for Lord of the Rings, especially if you're doing like a story about the Hobbits. Role-playing game would be the most common one, probably a massively multiplayer online role-playing game. We already have one of those. You know, strategy game does make a lot of sense, actually, um, in terms of Lord of the Rings, because big, awesome combats are paramount to the to the story. Spider-Man, which ones? Which ones do you think? Action, adventure, role-playing, shooter, simulation, or strategy? Probably, probably not an adventure game. You could do a Spider-Man adventure game, but you know most people aren't going to think of adventure when they're thinking of Spider-Man. Probably not a role-playing game. You you could have a leveling system, but that, I don't think that would be core to a Spider-Man game. That wouldn't be like oh, I want to level up as Spider-Man. Like that doesn't make a lot of sense because Spider-Man's already super powerful, and it's not like his abilities change over time. Probably not a shooter. Spider-Man doesn't use guns. He does sling webs, but that's just a small part of his character. He's he's more of a gymnast, an acrobat, crime fighter strategy not so much <laughs> he's he's one guy kind of difficult to have a strategy you could do like a team spider-man thing and make a strategy game out of it like either an action game or a simulation game and most i think almost all spider-man games fall into the action genre and then they have some light rpg uh, leveling up elements for the skill trees and learning which they sort of do as oh he's learning these things he's learning new ways to combo his abilities together as, as he's going along Horseback riding. Uh, I bet you you can already guess. Not an adventure game. You could do a horseback riding adventure game. Uh, I just don't think it'd be terribly interesting. Unless you're aiming for a niche audience of people who love horses. Probably not role-playing or shooters. You could do some role-playing aspects, especially if you're breeding horses. You could do some some something like that. Shooters doesn't make a whole lot of sense unless you're doing like a military horseback riding game. And it's all about shooting from horseback. Red Dead Redemption has shooting from horseback, but I, I wouldn't make that a whole genre for it. Probably not strategy game. There could be elements of strategy in there. Um, if you were doing like a racing, horseback riding racing game, generally it's going to be a, a, an action game where it's just about riding a horse around and uh, doing action elements or a simulation. where you're, and, and that's where most of the horseback riding games are. Making mechanics your system so once you've picked your genre and now you sort of know what the basic systems are now you have to make mechanics within a system make that system work <clears throat> so we're going to use lord of the rings as an example again so with lord of the rings we are going to go with the strategy game so we're making a strategy lord of the rings game you would definitely have a combat system uh, potentially an experience and leveling system for your individual characters 
uh, or at least for your army as a whole, there'd be some sort of economy so you can upgrade your weapons and armors and things like that. Uh, some sort of point scoring system to determine winners in, in combat. But overall, you were going to focus on the, the combat system of this strategy genre Lord of the Rings game. Within that combat system, we have to determine things like how do units move around on the map. So in this case, we're going to choose a fighting surface that is a hexagonal grid. <clears throat> Here you can see an example of a hexagonal grid. Uh, in the, the reason to choose this is that uh, a unit here can attack in all of the directions and move in all of the directions. And so movement and stuff is um, makes a little bit more sense than it does on a square grid. That you can do a square grid, but when you move diagonally on a square grid, it's effectively moving two at the same time. So there's some funny stuff that happens there that doesn't happen on a hexagonal grid. Though a hexagonal grid is more complicated for an average user, so you have to be careful about when you use it. Um, we'll say that standard movement for a unit is five spaces. Um, when you do that, you can sort of determine what the overall map size should be. Uh, and so in this game, uh, because the standard movement of a unit is five spaces, we're going to ha want to have maps that are quite large with like over a hundred um, grid spaces in either direction, um, just as a rule of thumb. Uh, so we're going to have uh, a mechanic here where heavy armor decreases movement by two. So if a unit has a heavy armor, they're less mobile, makes sense, fits in with the, the rest of with the combat system. Um, we'll say that the average creature has 100 hit points. So if we know that an average creature has 100 hit points, then we also can sort of determine what sort of combat we want to see. So in this case, we're going to go with standard melee attack does 5 to 10 damage. So we're going to give it a randomization factor in that it's a range. And then we're saying that basically any combat between two creatures can take 10 to 20 attacks in order to take down another creature just on average. So these are very long, drawn-out combats, so um, focus firing is going to be important and things like that. And then you'll probably have big things like spells and stuff um, that, that do special things. Here we've got an example of a special ability. Aragorn can attack two enemies per turn, so he's just so good in combat that he can hit one and then another. Um, generally they have to be standing next to each other or we could even add some movement into his ability so he can attack one and then move another hex and attack another all sorts of ways to do it but this is just the most basic example of what mechanics you would see in this sort of combat system so it's sort of giving a vague outline of that you need to determine the play field how the play field works how the characters move on that play field so what type of movement is average and then once you have the average movement you can do variations based on what the unit is. A hobbit might move less spaces, might have the ability to hide. So you have an ability system. Each unit should have some sort of ability, maybe multiple abilities that they can choose when to use. Maybe it has a cooldown. Heavy armor should decrease movement. Light armor should potentially you know, move faster. If there's horses involved, anyone on horseback might move much faster. Maybe they can move 10 spaces. You know, from all that, like you can sort of see how this game is now developing and already you should get an idea of basically is this going to be fun like am i going to be would i enjoy this this type of strategy game and uh the answer for me is yes your answer might be different <laughs> <laughs> mechanics of reinforcement and tension a mechanic of tension is a mechanic or system that forces the player to make difficult decisions now, it doesn't necessarily have to be super difficult. It's just that there should be some give and take depending upon which way you go with that. So a, so a good mechanic of tension would be, um, let's say that if you attack, your movement stops in that strategy game. Um, so you have to sort of determine where you want to position your character before you make your attack and things like that. So there's all sorts of little subtle ways to do tension mechanics, but um, every decision should feel important. And then we have the mechanic of reinforcement, a mechanic or system that gives benefits to other mechanics or systems. Basically, it's not fundamental on its own, but it's reinforcing something else. So an example of that is if you have a health system, then a potion mechanic where you can drink a potion to gain back health would be a re reinforcement mechanic. So it calls back to that system. Uh, so now we're going to look at Super Mario Brothers, a platformer, a very famous platformer that everyone should have played. 
but might not have because you know that was like a million years ago we're talking about the nintendo entertainment system 2d platformer that um sort of started everything uh this is what it looks like if you've never seen it before which is i guess possible maybe you've played it on the nintendo ds or something um it has a uh, combat which is just stomping on goombas um but also you know just sneaking past bowser to uh hit the axe and drop the bridge navigation you're moving left to right it's a very simple navigation you're always moving to the right but you have to jump around and land on things and you know grab vines and whatnot it has an economic system you have to gain 100 coins in order to gain a life and um <clears throat> it's got a point scoring system you can see in the top left there it's just it's just a score it's based on everything you've collected and how quickly you've moved through the level so um coins 100 coins equals a life coins increase your score there is a timer if it expires you die <laughs> it takes more time to collect coins what i'm showing you is uh two reinforcement mechanics and two tension mechanics so 100 coins equals one up that's a reinforcement mechanic you should collect coins because you gain more lives uh, coins increase your score another reinforcement mechanic you should try to get all the coins because it increases your score and then two tension mechanics uh, if the timer reaches zero you're dead so that timer is always ticking down so you know there's increased tension in the level i have to get through and um, it takes more time to collect coins than it does to just run past them so obviously that creates tension in, in, in the game as well so to uh, all of this is you know part of the coin collection system all right that's it <clears throat> questions and answers topics covered in lesson 02 we talked about the game genres uh and how they have basic systems associated with them uh not every genre has uh, the same systems uh, within it because you can go on variations of a genre and these days we're doing a lot of genre mixing so rpg elements are sneaking into everything but basically, there are some core systems that are going to be part of any uh, of a particular genre that you can't avoid. Uh, for for example, a shooter has to have combat. If you come up with a shooter that doesn't have combat, I'm very curious to play that. Um, you want to pick your genre by the game subject. So whatever your topic is, is going to help you determine what genre you should start with. Uh, you can always, you know, it's not a solid thing. You can always vary that genre or mix your genres. But generally speaking certain subjects uh, are better with certain genres and that's just a natural thing to do and you can always genre break meaning that like let's say you did want to do that spider-man adventure game because you really want to get into the character of spider-man and like the decisions he has to make in his civilian life like that would be a cool thing to do and it would sort of be a genre breaker for that subject matter but it's you know generally speaking the genre matches up to the subject in a, in a general way uh, then we talked about creating mechanics for a system once you know what the genre is and you know the core systems for it you're going to start creating mechanics within that system that's what makes the system come to life and that's also where you're going to determine a what your main focus is so the majority of mechanics will be going to one system and the other systems will probably have less mechanics because they're not the core focus of the game and um you'll once you know what that core system is and you're putting the mechanics into it uh typically it's going to be combat for most games but you know not always sometimes it's economy sometimes it's a uh, conversation but once you're creating those mechanics you'll start to see like how fun is this game going to be you'll start to see like oh wow i can do all these abilities and oh i can see all these variations of units and and how these things will interact that's where you start to see on paper if the game is going to be fun and then you have mechanics of tension and reinforcement uh, every mechanic should either reinforce uh you know the a, a system or it should create tension in the system um, if it doesn't do either generally you're going to want to cut it because it's not reinforcing something and it's not creating tension that makes the game more interesting and so you know so when you create a mechanic and it doesn't seem to do anything for the game or it doesn't fit in you know cut it <clears throat> that's just a, a general principle all right yeah as always there's homework so i want you to pick a game genre that you love 
Um, these are just examples. You can pick any genre that you can think of. Action, adventure, role-playing, shooters, simulation, strategy, again. And then pick an activity or experience that you know well. Maybe you are a judo expert. Maybe you like to go horseback riding. Maybe you're an artist. Maybe, I, I don't know, what, whatever your activity or experience is that you know well. Maybe, maybe it's a sport. Um, and then write down a system that you think expresses that activity in the genre you have chosen. So um, this is a this is a situation where you're sort of breaking, you could be breaking genre activity connections. So let's say that you picked um, a role-playing game and the activity that you love is art. So how do you make an art role-playing game? <laughs> and And so in an art role-playing game, probably um, a point scoring system is going to be the main focus of the game because how else are you going to determine if art is good or bad, right? <laughs> so now you're sort of being the judge jury uh, of what makes for good art. And so now you have to write down a system that you think expresses that activity in the genre you have chosen. So pick one of the systems that we, we've we detailed here, combat, navigation, experience, and leveling, camera, economy, points and scoring or a conversation up to you how which one you want to do and then now that you have the system create several mechanics for that system that you think will make the gameplay experience more like the real experience so you're trying to imitate the real world by creating mechanics in a system for an activity that you love in a genre that you love I know that seems like a lot, but I know you can do it. I believe in you. And if you have any questions, you can always join me on Discord. Ask me there. The whole purpose of this channel is to teach game design, and I hope that I'm doing a good job of it. If you appreciate this video, please like and subscribe. Share this with all your friends. If you are out of school, feel free to share it with your teacher and say, hey, this guy's been useful for me. Do you think this is something we could show the class? I would love that. I appreciate it. It makes me feel good. I like accomplishing something. And, oh, right. <clears throat> and uh, 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 uh. <laughs> once you've created those mechanics, note which mechanics create tension and which ones re reinforce other mechanics. And if they do neither, make a note of that as well and consider how you could make them create tension or reinforce the other mechanics or think about how you would have to cut them from the game. Because I think that's one of the things that I don't harp, uh, talk about enough is that sometimes you make things and you just need, they just don't work and you have to cut them and you just sort of have to accept that that's just how game design goes sometimes. Sometimes you make things and it doesn't work out, you just got to cut it. All right, that's it. Thank you for joining me and uh, have a nice day.